Hi, my name is Chris Biblis, and I wanted to write a video to kind of show you guys a practical application for the solar controller that I created. Um, I'm going to give you a run through of my system, and maybe that will help you out uh, if you have to alter the code. Uh, at least seeing where it's where it's being used and where I where I designed it might help you out. So I'm just going to do a walkthrough real quick. <clears throat> Okay, so let's see if I can get this out. All right, well, here's my system. I've got this is my it's an 80 gallon hot water heater, and you see all the plumbing and everything. It's kind of ugly right now. I'll fix that later. But uh, basically, what I did was I took the uh, the drain valve out of the hot water heater, and I put a nipple in its place. Let me get in there. Put a nipple in this place and I put a T and I put the valve on the outside of course so that I can still drain it. But that's how I'm tapping in to the cold side at the bottom. And then on this side, I've got my hot water tapped in right here. It's coming down. That's my on and off in case I have a leak or something. Uh, it comes down into this pump. This pump runs into my solar heat grid which is the three, these three pipes here. And then it comes back out through these three pipes, feeds in here, goes back down. Okay, now, it also goes up, comes over, and this is my transfer block that I'm using to transfer the solar heat from up on the roof to the hot water heater. So, basically, comes in on the cold side, no, I'm sorry. This is my cold line and comes in through the bottom, goes up, transfers, comes comes back down and goes into the bottom. Okay. This one here is just a loop that goes up to my solar collectors on the roof of the garage. And so basically it just had to turn it upside down because of the plumbing, but uh, it comes out here goes up to the solar, comes down, back around, back through, and back up. I've got just straight antifreeze, a 50-50 antifreeze in this uh, collector uh, because I live in a, a really cold place. So, anyhow, that's basically the system. As you can see, I've got the controller going. It's been going for a couple weeks now, uh, maybe three weeks now. Uh, no problems. Uh, other than that, oh, let me show you this too. This, as you can see on the instructional, you'll see that I said I set a PCB design for you to build. That's basically what I did. So I just have to uh, uh, solder the LM335 to the wire, that's thermostat wire, and just run it to wherever I'm going, and then come back into here. I don't have to mess with the breadboard. But that design's on there if you know how to do PCBs. You're welcome to give that a shot. Works really well. I just use a female header on the PCB and I just plug it into the back. Um, the thermostats, I don't know if you can see if I've got a good shot up here or something here. Uh, I've got one thermal sensor here and then I have the other one up here. That's basically where I'm, I'm checking my transfer temperature because I know what the temperature is going in and then I know what the transfer temperature coming out of the collector is. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Very simple design. Uh, let me see if I can climb up on the roof and I'll show you my collectors. I'm heating with this thing. It's a three car garage. It's a 30, 32 by 40 garage. I've got the tubing ran through the slab and grids. And uh, I've got three loops in this garage for three bays. I've got a loop over the first bay, a loop in this bay, and I have a loop in the bottom bay. So, Okay, anyhow, let me get up to the collectors. All right, up here on the roof. Two-story garage, very scary. Anyhow, here's my collectors. I built these. These are my professional, professional mock-ups. I had some wooden ones on my, my house before. Sorry, I'm out of breath. I had to get up here pretty hard. Anyhow, I've just got three of these things. They're three foot by four foot. And I've got them 
ran in series. Water comes in there, goes up, comes in here, goes up, goes in here. I'm getting a lot of a lot of thermal transfer with this. So uh, with like I said, with uh, well, let me show you this in case you attempt a design like this. So this is where it goes back down, but I put a, a little five pound check valve on top, keeps it from blowing out. But this is a little safety measure I have because on my other design, it actually got so hot one time that it boiled over and busted my pipe. So I implemented this little gizmo to make sure I have some kind of blow off, little steam protection. Anyhow, gotta get back off this roof. Wanted to add one more thing. Uh, these two pumps up here I have turning on at the same time. However, I am using two different relays. So you'll see where I'm turning on two relays at one time. That's the, the uh, R1 and the R2 that's turning on, which is basically turning on those two pumps. I could have wired them, <clears throat> wired them together and put them in one relay because this board will surely handle that little bit of amperage. These things are running at 60 watts. You know, at 120, that's a half an amp. Those things are fun. So. Uh, I could probably run all of them on one, but it wouldn't do me any good because this one runs separately as you see in the schematics and or on the instructional. So, anyhow, I hope, let me turn this thing around here. I hope this was helpful and uh, good luck. And if you're on YouTube and you found this video and you're curious as to what we're talking about, uh, it's about the Adreno board and I wrote a program for it and built the thing. Got a nice instructional, instructional, still out of breath. Nice instructional on the internet. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, go check it out, see if you like it. Uh, maybe you can get into it too. All right, thanks.